Hey everyone, Andy from Fotherson Golf. Uh, Riley's over there somewhere getting ready for his competition. Uh, so I've come out and I'm gonna film a little video about how I use the ShopScope V3. So there's loads of review um, videos out there. Feel free to go and check those out. This is kind of a review, but it's more how I've got to enjoy the watch, what I like using on it, some of the good features, um, and I'm gonna play six holes. So two par fours, two par threes, and two par fives and it will give you a little bit of an indication of uh, as we're going along the yardages that I'm hitting and also the features of the watch itself and why I like using it. Okay, so first tee, we've got 377 around the corner. I'm going to hit a little three wood with a cut, hopefully uh, on the fairway. Right, straight into the tree. Should be all right. I wouldn't really call this a review. This is just sort of my my experience using it. Um, there's loads of good reviews out there, which I've uh, I've enjoyed watching just to get a little bit of extra information for these. So uh, feel free to give them a bit of a look. But this one's really how to use it and get the best out of the uh, the watch. Um, as I approach my first shot, I can see it's in the clear. Um, and I'm going to record every distance that I hit. So obviously um, I'll edit this afterwards and it will show you what I'm hitting each club. And that's one of the benefits of using this watch in terms of uh, getting to know yardages. So let's see what we've got here. Must have got a bit lucky off the tree. So there it was, bounced down, got a full shot, but not a very good camera angle. <laughs> And on these five holes, all I'm going to do is aim for the middle of the green. Um, try and get some greens in regulation. Uh, we've got 162 here. Um, it's 144 to the front and 177, and you don't want to go long on this hole. So could be a slightly flyer lie. Um, wind's slightly down. I'm going to go with a 9-iron, 161. Okay, so I picked up my 9-iron. You can see there that it's registered. It's got the 9-iron in the top right-hand corner. I've got the 164, 144 and 177 to the front. So it gives you a bit of an indication into uh, what, we're, what we're doing here. Okay. Okay, so slightly pushed, uh, but we've hit the green um, and we're putting for birdie on the first hole, so we're all good. So for starters, that's one of the benefits of using a watch. Now, if you've watched our Instagram, I'm always promoting aim small, miss small. Uh, I use a rangefinder, I use it all the time. Um, but if you just want a quick yardage, you want middle of the green, um, then you know the watch is an, a good, easy reference. Uh, the system uses three GPS satellites. Uh, so I've never I've never really come across a yardage that I think it's come up that it's uh, it's incorrect. Riley uses the motor caddy GPS, um, and you know comparing both of those at the same time, um, they're always very very close as well. So you know I do think using a rangefinder is the way to go, but don't always hit the fairways. Sometimes you're stuck behind a tree. Um, sometimes it's nice just to double check the yardage that you've got. Um, so as we approach the, the first green, um, let's see if we can get this birdie. I'll show you what happens with the putting. Okay, so we're safely on the green. Um, see the ball just behind me there. Uh, obviously aiming for the middle of the green. It's not far off. I slightly pushed it, travelled on the wind, um, but we're on. Uh, putting, so we're moving on to the putting. So I am now on and you can see now that you've got the pin collect. So with the pin collect, it's showing you whether you've got one, two, three, and you can go up to four or pick up. So hopefully no one's going to do anything more than a four put, but you could edit it afterwards if you did. Um, so yeah, let's go and see. Okay, a little bit longer than I'd have hoped. OK, 
Okay, so we're in the hole for two. I'll now uh, collect that data. I will then put in that it was two putts. So that just confirms. So you go back in uh, editing the round at the end. Um, it will know that there's been two puts on, on the green and hopefully using the tag, it will pick up pretty much where they were from. But it just makes sure that, you know, if you did three put or pick up or anything else, there's those options on the actual watch itself. Okay, so the next thing I like about the shot scope is the ability to see how far you've hit the shot on the course. So uh, there's a, uh, a button you can press on the, uh, on the watch, top left, as you're walking down to your ball, uh, when it's registered, and I can see that I've hit this shot 293 yards. So when you're out there with your mates, you want to find out who's hit the longest drive, uh, or how far you've hit an A-time when you think you've hit a good stock shot and you want to go up and actually find out what the numbers are there and then, uh, you can use that on the watch. So good feature, I like it. Um, and set up a good birdie chance again. Well, we'll see. Okay, so we've got 114 uh, to the middle. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit into winds. This is where I definitely lose a little bit of yardage. Um, so I've got a 50, which is a 130 club, 125, 130. Uh, because it's into wind, this should come up short. I'm just gonna aim for that middle gap. If it comes up a little bit short, it's not a problem because we've got a red flag. So it's flown all the way. So with the drive 290, I mean, that has probably carried, I'll find out on the watch in a second, um, but that's actually carried its distance. So of course the conditions, probably with the sun being out a little bit warmer, it's just going that little bit further, Milo. Got a little outside look at Birdie. Another good middle of the green. See the break. But tapping par. There we are. And pin collect. Okay, the next feature that I really like about using uh, the watch is the ability to look at hazards. So on the third hole, we've got three bunkers. Um, and not always with a range finder, depending how shallow the bunkers are, can you get an accurate reading how far the carry is over a bunker or the water. Um, so looking on here, just going in, we can see that the, the shortest bunker is 155. Then we've got 167, which will be the one on the left. And then the furthest one on the right is about 174. So 174 is the one that we want to carry. Um, I know that we're going into the middle of the green because that's what we're going to try and play today. But 174, would be the miss if we were going for the flag. Um, we have got 176 to the middle of the green. So that is a, a stock eight iron in these conditions. Get Milo out of the way. Come on. Yeah, 17. 176 has become the new eight iron shot. Um, like I said, the wind is behind a bit, but because it didn't affect the last hole, uh, I don't think it is affecting too much. So middle of the green. Well, that is actually all over it. It's a great shot. Right. Go and tap that birdie in. Okay. Okay, this one is a par five down the hill. <clears throat> if I really wanted to, I could like really try and rip a driver down here, but 
going to try and show you another feature. So, I've got to one. Don't need to do anything silly. Going to knock a three iron down there. And this should roll, so I should get a good distance on this. Wow, that was not <laughs> that was not the strike I was after, um, but it has worked. Okay, so after one of the world's worst three irons, it gives me the opportunity to show a good three wood here. So we have got 280 to the green. Now this is going to need everything. It's going to turn slightly right to left. Okay, so we're down by the uh, the right bunker. A little chip across the green. Right, so as we're walking down uh, this par five, let's uh, let's have a little chat about the uh, the watch itself. So how it looks, and um, as you can see, the the watch is quite a slimmed down version. Um, the previous V2 was quite big, um, but the V3 really has sort of taken on that feedback, made it a lot smaller, um, and it fits fine on the wrist. And I mean, even Riley, there's enough buckles on the actual watch itself to make sure that the uh, the watch fits even a junior what I find is that there is a negative to this watch and I've spoken to shot scope about it and that is the fact that the strap does come off um, it's got like a strange clip and no watch in history has been designed that way uh, and shot scope are aware and future iterations of the watch um, I doubt you'd see a similar uh, version of the strap but it's a little tip um, for about two pound on Amazon you can get these little rubber bands that sort of sit over the top of the strap and uh, and that sorts it all out to be honest um, it is a slight uh, disadvantage with the watch but it's easily easily overcome and um, yeah I mean it's comfy I don't like wearing watches playing golf but I prefer to wear it knowing that it's giving me some data and and everything else and since I've been wearing it I really haven't seen a great deal of issue uh, with it so anyway we're down by the ball I've got a difficult chip shot here okay so it's saying 48 to the middle of the green now I wouldn't use a watch at this distance um, I wouldn't even need it for going over the hazard uh, you want to feel that shot you want to see where it's going to land and almost like throwing a ball so I'm going to drop it at the front of the green allow the ball to sort of roll up to the pin Set up a back to back birdie, hopefully. Uh, it's just hit that front slope, but it's another green in regulation and another birdie chance. So one of the good features about the, the watch is the ability to pause around. So if you've been following us for a while, you'll see that me and Riley like to play fun little chip shots around the green. So you go into the watch, you hold down the top left button. As you hold down, it comes up pause. You press the tick and that is no longer recording any shots. So come along. Play a chip shot. Knock it 16 foot past and keep practicing but great little feature and the ability to sort of keep that round going but still have a little bit of fun or a little bit of practice as you're going around without impacting on the actual data itself okay so need to remember to uh, resume the round so again exactly the same way hold down the top left comes up resume press the top right and we're good to go so we've got 191 to the middle pin is at the back the wind is down a bit um, we are trying to play middle of the green golf it's a bit between a seven and a six I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the six I'm gonna go for the pin but just a little bit long so middle but back middle oh it's right at it is it long Oh, 
it's a good shot again. Why can't I play this when I'm actually playing golf? So as you can see, playing green in regulation golf, I should be over there, middle of the green, but I've slightly pushed it. And actually, if I was going for this green, I would probably be just off. Uh, so it's worked in my favour. Got the good right club, just that little bit long seven would have been a bit too short. Oh, two under. I have never ever been two under through five. You've seen it here first. Okay, right. Last par five. Good birdie chance here. And it'll be a good opportunity to show you the uh, the function of hazards uh, using this because um, there's a bit of a brook that runs in front of the the par five green which always troubles riley because it means he can't really get there ever in two or three but right so little tip always good to give it a couple of swings to register the actual club itself so if you don't see anything in that window it's not going to give you a good reading it's a bit left that one i can see it bounce it's okay but we will not be going for the green in two right milo Right, so I did want to show you um, on the watch the ability to look at the actual water itself but I can't play a shot there yet so I'm going to be knocking out sidewards. Milo's right in the way. What are you doing? Yeah, back there. Good boy. Try and turn it round that corner a little bit. Okay, we're good. Okay, so we've got 180. Um, just showing you on the actual watch itself, uh, the water hazard. So it comes up as a uh, as a sort of water little blue squiggle on the actual uh, watch itself. And we had 145. Well, that's not really in play because we're going 180. Um, not a lot of wind. 180 has got to be a 7 iron. Slightly, slightly off the right, I think. It's pretty dead. Right, let's see if we can get this last green in regulation. Okay, so we've got it. Left-hand side of the green. Two puts for par. We finish the video one under. Okay, there we are, six holes done using the shot scope. Um, great bit of kit, we love it. Uh, if you like the video and you like the shot scope itself, feel free to, to drop us a message. All the details are in the description. Uh, we are shot scope ambassadors. Um, all that means is that if you use our link, then uh, we get a little kickback and that all goes towards helping Riley's journey. So no pressure, feel free to use that in the description. Um, we're more here to answer your questions. So if you've got any questions about the device, drop us an email and we'll get back to you. Um, there's a reason I've used ShotScope for the last year. I genuinely enjoy it. I used to do all the shot tracking on a, a mobile app. The fact that it's all done for me now, it's not perfect. And the next video will show you how to go about actually recording the, uh, the round and going through the editing. Uh, but it is 95% perfect and um, hopefully you got to see a few of its features and uh, why, why we continue to use it. If you like the video, uh, give us a like, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We've got some other videos with flight scope coming up soon and me and Riley are going to get out and we've got some good golf courses planned in. So thanks for dropping by and uh, we'll see you again next time.